Good morning, everyone. Today is Meditation Altar Tour Day. Rick is filming, and this is just, I'm just gonna give you a little view of what I see when I'm sitting in my little peaceful space. So we have uh, stone Zen garden out here, and we have a beautiful Buddha, and it used to be this garden where we filled it with tulips until we realized that the deer really liked tulips. So that was a rookie move when we first moved in. And I love it because all the tulips were eaten and enjoyed. And this one tulip comes up every year, it looks like it might have a little bud next to it, that happens to pop up right in front of where we have our lovely Buddha. I'm just gonna show that a little, so people can see that yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, so. cool? Yeah, so we get it this comes beautiful... up every year, the single white tulip. Yeah, it's so pretty, I love it. Yes, so that's where I'm sitting at. If you move over this way, this is where the altar is. This is a beautiful wall hanging with some auspicious of time in Atlanta and um, California. And then this is the altar, and when I look out this way, I see a beautiful little rhododendron tree that grew up from being no bigger than, I don't know, was it a foot high, honey? I now think something like that, yeah. Flowers. Let's see, we'll and go out blooms. there. And in the spring, what coming up, I guess it is spring, although it, there was snow on the deck this morning. Um, there's beautiful trees out here that will give me some pretty flowers. There's a Japanese maple and a dog dogwood. Dogwood, yeah. 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 So it's, it's so beautiful. So here is the altar itself. I'm just going to start with what's in front of it my sitting area. This is my shawl because oftentimes I'm a little chilly in the morning when I'm sitting. So I can put this, my little hand knit shawl on. I like to knit. She's, a, I, she's a knitaholic. Yeah, yeah. So when I'm hanging out, I like to knit. So it's just a nice, my creativity that is here to keep me warm. And then I have my favorite Zafu ever. This is like this meditation cushion spelled Z-A-F-U, if you look them up. And this is fantastic because we've sat on ones that were wonderful, like organic cotton. We've mm -hmm. sat on ones that are buckwheat hulls. But this one actually is a combo of the hulls. And then it has memory foam on top. So super soft, gives it a little bit more loft for the aging knees. So when I'm sitting, it just put, puts me off the ground a little bit more and has a nice contour, fits to the body, which is great. And then underneath is a very loved Zabutan, which, how old is that, Rick? Uh, let's see, 1979. So it's been well used. Was that 41 yeah. years, yeah. It's a bit of a flatsy at this point, but you know, it serves its purpose. We just added a little rug underneath it to give it a little more cushion. Yes. Because when I'm sitting, and I'll show you that, it's off the top. And then we can move over to the altar itself, which is simply a cabinet, um, probably like a bedside table, right? I'm gonna go in closer, Laura, is that okay? Sure, and you can take a look at some of these items. So these items are near and dear to me. A lot of them have spiritual significance as well as just things that I love and representing family and people that I love. So you'll notice an array of different things. Um, of course, the crystals in the front, which are stunning, I think, as well as just feel really good. Um, so we have a painting, I'll start from the back, by our friend Daryl Abraham, who is a local artist um, and is incredibly talented and it's of water, I kind of have all the different elements represented in my altar as far as the five elements. They're, yeah, so I have some different things like wood for the earth, the water is in the picture. You'll see when I sit, um, there's fire involved. And then in front of the beautiful picture, we have Buddha, which is always a peaceful, loving symbol, and some well-used mala bracelets. You can see they've been so well used. Buddha's enjoying them that um, <laughs> very stretched. The yeah, elastic is actually stretched out, and malas can be used to help out in your meditation practice. In fact, I'm wearing one around my neck now that's made out of sandalwood. So you can take each bead and say your mantra that I was talking about earlier this week, and use say it once per bead, and it's 108 beads around, and that just gives you a nice little timing for your meditation. All right, and then we have. 
yin yang symbol here. It's our symbol of balance, and balance is our wellness center, our baby, as well as the foundation of health. And on top is a little coin that says, abide in silence. As many of you know me, silence is not one of my, you know, fortes. So this helps me to remember the spirit and stone to abide in silence. Challenge when I'm meditating. And better to light a candle. Chinese, Chinese proverb. Because I like to use incense, many types of incense. This is the mini incense box. Look how small they are. You have little tiny sticks in here. For travel, here. right? Yeah, little tiny sticks in here. The holder and then light it up. All right, so, so much fun incense. We'll look at a little bit more later. This is the bowl for the incense. Metal and, element, right? Yeah, and we have um, sand in there. And we have super simple. Some of them have a little hole that you have to put the incense in, but then there's incense that's all different sizes and widths, and then it's so much easier just to have the sand. And I love that after the incense burns, it just becomes part of the landscape of the sand. It just goes back into being used again. And then I have this back here. I smudge um, the whole house on different days of the month. Uh, it could be full moons. It could be different times where I feel like the house needs a little cleansing. So I do have different types of smudge sticks. I it's more of a Native sticks. American tradition, correct? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. And actually, um, traditionally, smudge sticks are, or commonly, they're known as they're sage, which actually does have a very detoxifying effect in the air. So if someone's sick and there's virus in the air, germs in the air, ceremony of it, because the ceremony is quite stunning, um, it actually has medicinal purposes. Cool. All right, and then you're going to see, speaking of saging, I learned a lot about saging from our space uh, energy guru, Karen Kirchen, and she actually dropped off, I've gotten a few little wonderful COVID drop-offs um, here and at work. This one is, Karen actually painted this, it's a lotus. I painted didn't know she painted rock. it, yeah. wow. Yeah. Lotus, and this I loved because one of my favorite sayings is no mud, no lotus. And that just says, you know, you need to have that mud piece, or the Buddhists would say the suffering piece to have the beautiful blooming at the end. So it's a great, I just love that saying. And for me, that just really resonates with meditation as well. Then I have some items from the kids that they painted. I've always been very drawn to dragonflies and they do symbolize transformation and then the little happiness panda so my kids gifted me these so they made it to the altar and then we have our metal element here this is called a singing bowl and i love it because it is a, for me it signifies the beginning and ending of practice it also if you've been in my workshops is the like the, the bell, the bell at, in high school that starts class or ends class. So I love this because oftentimes we'll have large groups and people will be very um, communicative and they'll be talking and enjoying each other. And that's a wonderful part of the classes that everybody's getting to know each other. But sometimes it's hard to get everybody's attention and quiet them down. And when we ring this, it just seems to do the trick. It does indeed. Yeah, that's very nice. And I have my candle here, and that's helpful because I like to light my incense, and if I'm saging, I'm going to light my sage. Do all and my you're things. a pyro. You and, your, uh -huh. you and our son are both it's pyros. True. It's true. <laughs> it's true. And then here we have our gemstones. And I'm right, Come in again, Laura, if you don't yeah, mind. Come yeah, in a little yeah. closer. So this is selenite. This is one of the ultimate meditations, really. And you can see it's really very cool. It almost looks like, you know, it could separate into different layers, which I'm sure it could. But we're not going to do that here today. But it is almost like, a, it's a spiritual doormat, in meaning that it is like, when you come to your meditation altar, it's like the wiping off of your feet. It's like the cleansing of the energy so you can have um, this clear slate to meditate with. And it just really leaves you open. And it is actually a stone that's really recognized as wonderful for meditation. And then we have some different stones here. A lot of them I just love. And honestly, that's how I oftentimes will pick out my gemstones is 
if they feel good, if I'm drawn to them, if I think they're beautiful, if if I know where I'm placing them, like amethyst um, is wonderful for sleep and relaxation, um, great for healing intuition. Uh, I like my quartz. It's so there's some clarity. It gives me focused intention. Uh, this amazonite is just a beautiful color, but it also is good for balance. Is that in the jade family, Laura? It looks so jade-like. I mean, it's not I'm jade. I'm not sure. I'm Serpentine, not sure. you know, that whole group, yeah, you know. So I adventuring. Do love it, though. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's pretty. And then Malachite, these are this is this was a gift. It's actually symbolizes transformation. And it was a gift from my friends, the Kennedys, Kim and Greg Kennedy. And it was at a period of my life where some transformation was going on. So it was, it's a beautiful gift and it also actually feels really nice. Made it to the altar. We have some bloodstone. We have carnelian. Carnelian, my story about that is that it's wonderful for expression. And it is actually a great stone for people who are performers as well. But any type of ex expression. But Lily took a little carnelian stone to her and with her in her pocket to her auditions for college and other events. And it just was this wonderful talisman for her. So kind of fun. And Laura, can I ask something in, in, in your opinion? Because uh, you and I have spoken about this. I, I th for me, when I taught meditation class, I I, when I was talking about setting up altars, I said, this is not a just a Buddhist tradition. It's in the Christian tradition. That's right. It's in Islam. It's yes. in Judaism. I mean, everyone has their right. areas, altar. place, altar yeah. in their house, right? So yeah. it's not unique just to Buddhism That's or right. uh, Easter, right. Eastern philosophy. Exactly. So, okay. I mean, mine definitely has been that way because I am Asian. So there's <laughs> Asian... Um, feel to it, but I always like to remind No, it's beautiful. People, I mean, just beautiful. I like to remind people, um, the Buddha symbol, though, that Buddhism really, you know, it, it was a philosophy. So if we're, don't get stuck in the whole religion piece of the altar, unless you want to, for your own altar, you know? But um, for me, Buddha re represents so many wonderful things. So, all right. So we're back to um, our my hanging here. This is a piece of artwork we got locally from an artist that takes all scraps of different materials. She would go to the to Fabric Row or fa the Fabric um, area in New York City as well as Philadelphia and just like pick up the scraps and make these beautiful pieces. And this one really spoke to me, uh, especially for the meditation altar. It's got a little woman hugging her stone and I didn't know the history of that piece yeah, that's beautiful. Really beautiful wow I didn't know the history and of that she'll take pieces from different saris and recycled items as well wow. and make these beautiful pieces I think this is supposed to be a scarf but it made it to the altar I like it better where yeah I think that's awesome all right so let's just take a look here I am going to just show you my ritual remember my three breaths I was talking about so I sit down at, on my zapu here my cushion and sometimes I cross-legged, sometimes I'll put my knees back. And then what typically happens now is I, I'm gonna give you a little tour of what's going on in the drawer first, the drawers. So I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna show you guys. So I have some incense in here that's gonna help me out because I need to light some incense. Wow, what a selection. <laughs> so a lovely selection, all different types. There's powder types. I'm gonna do a piece of stick incense this morning. There's pieces that are coils. There are all sorts of, look at this. I just have to show you this because it's so pretty. We've collected incense over here. I remember when we- We really do collect it. Yeah, we, we're, we're kind of a <laughs> incense-aholics, aren't we? Yeah, and we use it every day. Yep. These are little coils that you light. There's two, two in this pack with sandalwood. So now, pretty. When I was in the Marines in Southeast Asia, we would take those and burn them and hang them by a wire because it kept the mosquitoes. The mosquitoes don't like them. Oh, yeah, so they would help keep the I mosquitoes away. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that as a child, actually. Not in Southeast Asia, but here, that my parents would have something like that. Yeah. So my little stock of incense here. And I'm going to take out some matches as well. This is a restaurant that's local, but it's also a cool little affirmation here. Good, Good luck. luck. Then in this drawer, we have some toys, some meditation toys, yeah. tingshas. This is also a way to symbolize starting of meditation, resonating.
Here's here. We have some more smudge sticks. Temple bell. The temple bell. So beautiful. And a nice scroll. Sometimes the artwork will change out. Actually, I think your flute's in there, Rick. Yep. You can play the music with. And then here, sometimes afterwards or beforehand, I'll like to read something and I can open up to a page and there's a beautiful saying. This one's called Life Prayers. 365 prayers, blessings, and affirmations to celebrate the human journey. And then a journal. So I can take notes on if I had any, something profound come up during my meditation, I can write it down. Beautiful. Something more than... Oh my gosh. And you're a big journaler, writer. Uh, you're good. About, you're so good about that. You've always been really good about that. I, mean. I love an important piece. So I'm going to put this back down as I get up. A, I go to the bathroom, as Rick said, <laughs> and then I brush my teeth, and then I light my candle here. Put this in here because I'm paranoid. I'm gonna set the house on fire. And I light my incense in the candle. Then it creates this very ethereal smoke. Hypnotic. Yes. Yeah. And then I start my meditation. Sometimes I'll ring the bell before, sometimes I'll ring it after. Depends on what mood I'm in. So this is the singing bowl. And you can ring it this way. Then if you want to make it sing. I don't know if you can all hear that. Since man, I uh, oftentimes I'll try to do it too fast. Hear that? It's changing. All right, we can keep going on and on with that. It's super fun, but I'm not going to because we're out of time. All right, we'll put this down and... That was awesome. That resonance is just, oof. Pretty. Thank you so much for joining me today. And it's just one small corner of the house to dedicate to something very special and very spiritual. I hope you have a great day. Enjoy your Sunday. We're on break. Happy Mother's Day, everyone, tomorrow Happy to all the mothers Day. out there and the, and the children of the mothers. Take care of your mom, the husbands and mates of the mothers. Take care of them. Yes, thank you. Have take a great day.